When NASA staff opened the hatches of Apollo 1, they were met by a truly distressing sight. It was three weeks until launch day and three astronauts were preparing for the test drive on the launch pad for that very day when something happened that impacted NASA forever. What they saw was a truly horrifying sight. Stay tuned to find out what happened. Before we move on to that story, let's have a look at a very similar one with Soyuz 11. Soyuz 11 On June 6, 1971, the Soyuz 11 successfully reached Salyut 1, the Soviet space station that had been placed in orbit in April of that year. The three Soyuz 11 cosmonauts were Georgi Dovrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Pastayev. They set a new incredible record for the longest time spent in space at 23 days, during which time they had occupied history's first space station. During their mission, the bold cosmonauts wowed Russians back on Earth with live television broadcasts, projecting hope and depicting a bright future. Pastayev also became the first man to operate a telescope in space. The three men carried out loads of experiments primarily concentrated on how the human body deals with extended periods of weightlessness. Their successful mission would stand as a triumphant rebuttal to the US victory of putting a human on the moon. The Soviets had hoped to recover the international fame they had not enjoyed since the historic launch of Sputnik on the 4th of October 1957. On June 29, 1971, the cosmonauts piled back into the Soyuz 11 spacecraft and began their descent to Earth. To everyone on the ground, everything about Soyuz 11's re-entry seemed to go off without a hitch. The mission was a perfect success, or was it? When the cosmonauts fired the explosive bolts to separate the Soyuz 11 re-entry capsule from another stage of the spacecraft, a critical valve was yanked open. 100 miles above the Earth, the capsule was suddenly uncovered to the nearly pressureless climate of space. As the capsule rapidly depressurized, Pastayev tried to close the valve by hand, but failed. However, the spacecraft seemed to make it through the atmosphere just fine, eventually landing in Kazakhstan as intended. The team anxiously awaited the return of the Soyuz 11 cosmonauts in a remote region of Kazakhstan. During this time, a nearby recovery helicopter spotted the scorched parachute of the spacecraft's descent module as it plunged its way towards Earth. The recovery team made their way towards the crashed module, knocked on the hatch, received no response from inside, so opened it up and made a rather horrifying discovery. They encountered all three men in their couches, motionless, with dark blue patches on their faces and trails of blood from their noses and ears. The recovery team removed them from the spacecraft. Dobrovolsky was still warm. The doctors gave artificial respiration. Despite their attempts to revive them, the three cosmonauts, Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Pastayev, sadly passed away. The unexpected and untimely deaths of the three cosmonauts instantly became the subject of intense debate between Tom Stafford, the chief of NASA's astronaut corps, who believed that the physiological stress of their long flight is what caused the cosmonauts' demise. However, NASA physician Chuck Berry speculated that it was not a physiological cause, but that a toxic substance of some kind found its way into the descent module. While the exact details of their deaths weren't known to the general public until a few years later, we now know that the fatal accident was determined to be the result of a faulty valve seal on the spacecraft descent vehicle that burst open during its separation from the service module. At an altitude of 104 miles, the deadly combination of a leaking valve and the vacuum of space quickly sucked all the air out of the crew cabin. Depressurizing it was due to the valve being hidden below the cosmonauts' seats. It would have been nearly impossible for them to fix the problem in time. Due to this, the three men had almost certainly been asphyxiated as their cabin air leaked out into space, replaced by a complete vacuum in which no human could survive for more than 90 seconds. The cosmonauts would have had no more than 15 seconds to find and then seal the hole in their damaged spacecraft before being made deaf and blind as their blood vessels burst due to the huge difference in pressure. As a direct result of the deaths of the Series 11 crew, NASA quickly made a complete review of the windows, hatches, valves, fittings, and wiring anywhere that could leak in the Apollo Lunar and Command modules. They also made the shift to requiring all cosmonauts to wear pressurized spacesuits during re-entry, a practice that's still in place today to avoid the same mistakes from happening. The Soviet Union did not send any future crews to Salyut 1, and it was more than two years before they undertook another manned mission. Space is brutally inhospitable to human life, so it's a small wonder that out of the 561 people who have gone beyond the safety of Earth, only three have died there. Five times as many have died due to crashes or explosions when rocketing away from Earth or re-entering its atmosphere. Before we get into our next story, give this video a like, smash the subscribe button and click on the notification bell to be one of the first notified every time we upload a brand new video. 
Apollo 1. Now we move on to a very similar story. It was 1 p.m. on the 21st of January 1967 at NASA's Cape Kennedy Launch Complex 34 USA. Three astronauts, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee, were all geared up and ready for the first manned Apollo mission. The ultimate goal was to check out the command module. Stay tuned to find out what happened when NASA staff opened the hatches of Apollo 1. They were met by a truly distressing sight. The goal was set by former U.S. President John F. Kennedy to be the first country to land a man on the moon by the end of the decade and have him return safely down to Earth. The astronauts were on the launch pad and 10 minutes away from a simulated test that was a dress rehearsal for the real launch that would take place less than a month later. The three men were all suited and booted up in the capsule, running through checklists and testing equipment when issues arose. The first problem occurred when Gus Grissom entered into the spacecraft and was hooked up to the oxygen supply. He described a strong, sour-smelling odor in the spacesuit loop. The team instantly stopped to take a sample of the suit loop, and after a much-heated discussion with Grissom, they decided to continue with the test. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing, as the next issue was a high oxygen flow indication, which triggered the master alarm. The men examined this matter with the environmental control system staff, who believed the high flow resulted from movement of the crew. The matter was not fixed, but the test resumed. A third serious problem happened in communications. Initially, faulty communications appeared to only exist solely between Grissom and the control room. The crew made the appropriate adjustments. Nonetheless, the difficulty expanded to include communications between the operations, checkout building, and the blockhouse at Complex 34. Due to the failure in communications, everything came to an abrupt halt at 5.40 p.m. At 6.31 p.m., the test conductors were ready to pick up the countdown, when ground instruments showed an unexplained rise in oxygen flow into the spacesuits. This occurred as one of the astronauts slightly moved. Four seconds later, Chaffee declared ever so casually through the intercom, Fire. I smell fire. Two seconds later, astronaut White's voice was more insistent, Fire in the cockpit. Protocols for emergency escape called for a minimum of 90 seconds. However, in practice runs, the crew had never performed the routines in the allotted time. Grissom had to lower White's headrest so White could then reach above and behind his left shoulder to move a ratchet-type device that would, in theory, release the first of a series of latches. According to one source, White was able to make part of a full turn with the ratchet before he was overwhelmed by smoke. Spacecraft technicians raced towards the sealed spacecraft, but before they could reach it, the command module shattered. The room broke out into a sea of flames and thick black clouds. Many of the staff tried to save themselves and get out while they could, fearing the fire might set off the launch escape system atop Apollo, which would result in devastating consequences. Some staff stayed behind to rescue the astronauts. However, the intense heat and dense smoke drove one after another back, but they finally succeeded and opened the hatch. Unfortunately, despite trying in vain to revive them, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee had all passed away. Firemen arrived within three minutes of the hatch opening. Doctors followed right behind. The flash fire that swept through the cockpit revealed the devastating impact it had on the three astronauts. It was a distressing sight to see that it destroyed 70% of Grissom's spacesuit, 20% of White's, and 15% of Chaffee's. Doctors treated 27 men for smoke inhalation. Two were hospitalized. A medical board concluded that the astronauts died of carbon monoxide asphyxia, with thermal burns as contributing causes. The board could not determine how much of the burns came after the three men had died. After removal of the bodies, NASA immediately seized everything. Shortly thereafter, NASA set up a review board to investigate the catastrophe thoroughly. Engineers at the Manned Spacecraft Center simulated the same conditions of the fallen Apollo to find out what went wrong and how to fix it so it would never happen to anyone else. The reconstructed events showed them that the fire started near to one of the wire stacks to the left and just in front of Grissom's seat on the left side of the cabin, which was a visible spot to Chaffee. Researchers calculated that the fire was undetected for about five or six seconds until Chaffee sounded the alarm. The Apollo 1 was a tremendous tragedy and a difficult time for everyone involved. During the years that followed, NASA was able to fix all the issues and implement astronaut safety. 21 months later, NASA sent humans back into space aboard Apollo 7, and a year after that, with Apollo 11, achieved Kennedy's goal of the USA being the first country to send a man to the moon. The 20th of July 1969 was the day Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made history and became the first and second man to step foot on the moon. On the 50th anniversary in 2017, NASA held a special ceremony to commemorate the fallen heroes of Apollo 1. 
What do you think about space? Tell us in the comments below. See you next time.